So our next example is the dihedral group. And it's always going to be D2N. And what this is, is you take a ingon and it's going to, so the set is going to be the symmetries of the ingon. So symmetries of the ingon. What does that mean? It's all of the ways of moving the ingon back onto itself. So, for example, so sub-example, if we take the foregon, also known as a square, I should say that this is a regular n-gon, so here's a square, I'm going to label the corners, well, let's do it like this, so that we can sort of, you know, see what I'm doing here. So the square, you can rotate it back onto itself, right? One, two, three, four. So that's by rotation. Another thing you could do is say, flip across that axis. axis. So we have a flip as well. And then we get the square back to itself, one, Four, two, three. Just from flipping across the axis. So those are two different symmetries. Now, how many symmetries are there in all? If I think of my square, I can think of one side of it being white and the other side being dark, so that after I flip it, I see the dark side. If I keep it white side up, there's the four rotations, or the only ways to move it back to itself. So I can rotate this again, and then I get to one, two, three, four, and then I can rotate it again, and then I get to one, two, three, four, and then when I rotate it again, I get back to here. Yeah. So rotating four times takes me back to where I started. Hmm, that's interesting. If I flip across this axis, if I flip twice, I get back where I started. So flipping twice gets me back where I started. Hmm, maybe that tells me that the flip squared is equal to the identity. Huh. Okay, so I've got four different symmetries when the white side is up, and when the black side is up, I'll have four symmetries as well. Four times two is eight, which, by the way, is why we have a two in here. So there's eight different symmetries of the square, and for a regular n-gon, in general, there's going to be two n different symmetries. So this is the two n symmetries of a regular n gon. What's my operation? The operation is just composition. So for example, I can rotate and then I can flip. again across that axis because I personally just kind of like that axis. And then what do I get? Well, now the dark side is up and I have one, two, four, three. If I flip again, I get back here. Let's see, what else do I want to say here? So another nice thing to notice is, well, okay, I'll leave that for now. Um, but what we should do is check that this is actually a group. So is the dihedral group a group? So we have to check. The identity is just the symmetry that leaves our two or our ingon alone. So we can leave it alone, and that's a perfectly good symmetry. Inverses exist because if I say rotate and flip this guy to get over here, I can unflip it and rotate it to get back here. If I have a symmetry, then the identity symmetry is, you know, I can always move back to the identity symmetry. So inverses exist, that's cool.
And for associativity, well, let's see. Something, so a nice way to show associativity here is actually to notice that if I list the corners, so this corner, then that corner, then that corner, then that corner, so, and just make a list. So this guy would be one, two, three, four. There's a list. This one would get the list. Four, one, two, three. This one gets the list. One, four, two, three, and so on. This one gets the list. Two, one, three, four. Well, these, these lists, are all just permutations. Yeah? And in fact, this dihedral group is then just a subgroup of the permutation group. So there's an identity, inverses exist, we're okay. If we take two symmetries and compose them, we get another symmetry, so we don't sort of fall out of the dihedral group into the bigger permutation group ever. It is a subgroup. And because we know that the product in the permutation group is associative, the dihedral group product will also be associative. So it's okay. It's a subgroup of the SM, the permutation group. So here we see a little bit of power. So once we know about subgroups, it actually becomes easier to check if something is associative if we happen to already know that the bigger group is associative. All right, so that's a good example.